again, everyone. Thank you so much for being with us today. My name is Mathilde, and I am the Digital Marketing Analyst here at Amity. Um, so we're really excited to be starting this series with CSM Practice and with EREIT. Uh, this whole series will be taking place over the next couple of months, and it's about scaling customer success. So this first topic is how to drive efficiency with automated customer success plays, and we're really Really lucky to have uh, you meet with us today. Hi, Reed. How are you? Okay, hi. So, hi. <laughs> <laughs> how are you today? Hi, everyone. Uh, good morning. Thanks for having uh, me. Yeah, thank you for being with us. Um, so, I know we have a lot, lot of content to go through. I won't take too much of uh, your time and everyone's time, but just a couple of housekeeping notes before we begin. Um, so, as usual, we'll be on Twitter, and uh, you can tag us uh, using our handle at uh, GetAmity, and you can also tag Irit. We'll be using the hashtag CSM web, uh, CS webinar, as usual, and um, you can see a little chat box on the side of your GoToWebinar panel, and uh, we'd really like for all of you to send us your questions as the webinar goes. Um, don't wait for the end, just send us questions during the during the presentation, and we'd really love to engage with you uh, using that chat box. Um, and of course, as usual, we will be sending the slides and the recording uh, to everyone tomorrow before the weekend. So um, that's it for me. Um, Yuri, thank you so much for being with us today. Um, I'm going to hand things over to you now. OK, hi, everyone. Uh, just wanted to say hi and uh, get you to see who you're your presenter is. I'm really excited to be here. Um, so my name is Irit Izips, and uh, I know everybody's coming from different parts, uh, maybe even in the world. So I'd love to, you to go to the chat and kind of say, you know, where are you from? What company you're from? Um, so just everybody could get to kind of see what kind of audience we have today. And I'm going to try and make the webinar as uh, engaging as possible for you. We're going to have polls and opportunities to ask questions. And I actually um, asked Mathilde if she could stop sometimes when you do submit questions about specific slides so I can address them during the webinar and you don't have to wait until the webinar is over because we have a ton of material for you, lots of great examples, and I hope you get, it gets you expired, um, inspired to, to do more things with uh, Playbook Automation. So. Um, go ahead on your chat if you can. Yeah, from France, uh, Canada right now, so that's really cool. Okay, we're going to use it a lot, this webinar, so hopefully we can get you engaged and uh, uh, submit more questions and comments during the webinar. All right, I'm going to turn my camera off, and um, thank you for joining, and let's, let's go ahead and start. Okay, so... Um, today, I wanted to welcome you. Today, we're going to go through a lot of stuff and um, really get you to understand how to drive efficiency, scale your team, um, especially looking at automated success plans. And I am going to uh, share with you what some of my clients are doing and some other really predominant companies so that you get a sense of what could be possible for you. So I want to start with a short poll just to see because, you know, success plays really differ a lot between different um, engagement models. So the first question I have to you is what is your main engagement model? So in the poll, go ahead and um, I'm going to launch it now. Just tell me, is it a high touch, meaning this is you have a, an engagement model with your customers where um, you're very strategic with them, your clients pay you a lot of money, and you really have a dedicated CSM to each. Is it just in time, meaning um, you only react to, you have maybe one to 300 or one, one CSM to 150 clients, so you only reach out when they ask you to or when you see that there's some sort of a, an issue and a tech touch is where your main engagement model um, refers to, you know, self-onboarding, freemium to premium, and your CSMs are really working on one-to-many playbooks. Okay. So I'm going to close the poll now. I see some people are still submitting. And let me show you what uh, we got. So 
most of the attendees um, actually have a high touch model, which is great because I'm going to address how high touch high touch models can still leverage automated plays <clears throat> to increase efficiency and scale the team, which I think is a lot of times we don't think about automated success plays for high touch, but most of my clients actually hybrid both. So I'm definitely going to touch on that. So stay tuned. If, even if I start with a tech touch or just in time, so stay tuned. Um, and then I'll, I'll also address high touch. And 34% is just in time and then 11% are tech touch. There's going to be something for everyone today. So if you have already tried uh, automated success playbooks, um, go ahead and um, write in the, I, I think there's another hmm, poll here, I'm just going to launch just to see how much, uh, how much experience everybody has and have experimented uh, with it and that would deter help me uh, kind of navigate through the slides and understand how much I need to explain and in terms of giving you the actual recipe to to go ahead and start with these kind of playbooks. About 55% of you have already voted, so I'm just going to uh, wait until a little bit more. Okay, let me share. I'm going to close the polls and uh, share with you what uh, the answers were. So about 32% of you have already tried some sort of automated plays, and about 70% of you um, have not yet. So I think that would that's terrific. You're going to learn a lot today, and you're going to get a lot of actual examples, so that it becomes very real for you. And hopefully, there's going to be at least one uh, playbook that you can um, take away from this. So you're in the right webinar if you currently have a customer success management team, but you want to do more uh, faster. Okay, so this is definitely applicable for both high touch and medium touch models. You're also in the right webinar if you want to create highly engaging experience, not just for your highest, highest paying customers, but for all of your customers, meaning um, it's really easy to dedicate a single CSM for every account, but obviously we can't, uh, you know, we can't do it, we don't have the budget for it. And so sometimes what happens is that the lowest customers <laughs> those paying customers don't get as much uh, attention and we tend to get the highest churn in that segment. So today hey. we're going to solve this enigma. Yes. Hey, um, I think uh, we're still seeing the results here. So uh, if you can hide the results, then we'll probably see your slides again. Yes, that's perfect. Thank you so Go much. Ahead. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, and so lastly, if you can identify with this scenario, then you know you're uh, in the right uh, webinar as well. So you thought about improving your existing customer success strategy in a way that would free up um, not just yourself but your team to do more every day so you can be more proactive and strategic. One of the complaints that I hear most and frustrating points is that as a customer success, you really want to work with each and every one of your customers so that they get more value. But we tend to be a lot reactive because there's so much we need to do and a lot of the work that we do is very manual and so we don't have enough time to be strategic and proactive. And so th uh, this is definitely something that can help uh, by automating some of the plays. You'll free up more time and uh, you will get uh, a lot more strategic. And now we're going to really focus on automated plays today, but that's not the only thing that would help you scale your team. And so what we've done is I've, I've worked with Matilda and Anity, and I want to thank you, uh, uh, thank them a lot, because when I work with customers to scale their team, we actually approach this in different manners. We, we not only do the automated plays, but we really take a step back and see uh, where can we increase proactiveness and productivity and we introduce new tools and new plays to make sure that this happens. We look at their engagement model and make sure that they have a proper account segmentation. And you'd be surprised how much, how many times the segmentation is not done in an optimum way. Um, and we also help them understand what do they need to monitor so that they can pitch to management um, 
showing what uh, your strategy resulted with and getting more budget approved so that you can implement more tools to be more proactive and more strategic. So, and then lastly, um, I'm going to have a webinar just to uh, really pinpoint some of the tools that my clients are using to create more responsible customers, which will in return help you scale. Uh, so I think that one is going to be a breakthrough. Uh, I really recommend looking into all these webinars and see which ones, because holistically, if you attend each and every one of them, you'll have a lot of tools uh, to get more sophisticated in scaling your team overall. So this is, I wanted to kind of step back and give you a little bit of background about myself um, and, and kind of like why do I do consulting for customer success and why am I so passionate about teaching companies on how to scale their customer success initiatives. And so in this picture you see Benny. Uh, Benny is my uncle. He's now 70 years old and yes, he is on a ladder uh, climbing up to put an ad on a building that he just fumigated. So. Back in the 70s, my uh, family, and when I say family, I mean all of my uh, mothers, uh, brothers and sisters, their cousins, uncles, and everybody else in that giant family um, got a whiff that um, the Israeli government, I'm from Israel, the Israeli government passed a new legislation that from now on, if you wanted to fumigate homes against uh, roaches and other things, you actually need to have a special license. And so they saw that as, a, as an amazing business opportunity. And everyone in the family, literally everyone, I remember that very distinctly, it was really weird, got a license to go ahead and fumigate. So we had a host of small businesses throughout my extended family that uh, set shop to help you know, uh, people uh, invite them over to fumigate their uh, apartments. And so that was back in the 70s. And uh, in the early 80s, you could already see a huge difference between one family to the next. It's certainly ours to my Uncle Benny. So Uncle Benny here is actually a multimillionaire. He built an empire out of that small business. And everybody started the same. Uh, he has, I don't know, dozens of employees. He recently bought a mountain, is how successful his business is. And I remember as a kid watching his uh, business go through such a trajectory, and um, I became fascinated. How come most of my, uh, you know, certainly us and most of the cousins in the family didn't get to get as big of a business as his? And without knowing it, I kind of dedicated my life to really solve that enigma. How do we scale a business? How do we grow a business? How do we grow a team? What makes some business processes more optimized to encourage customer success um, so that, you know, they come back to us and we can um, increase growth? And so today, uh, I think you could kind of see my involvement with customer success over the years very much like you would... Uh, search for the keywords customer success or customer success uh, management and certainly there's a big peak after 2013 and so I set shop for a customer success consulting firms um, a, and, and doing customer success consulting back in early 2014 and so now we have uh, it's not just me of course doing the consulting work but we have <laughs> that's a sticker that I actually give out to folks but it kind of looks like me I guess but um, we have a large company now. Uh, we offer strategy services for customer success teams, and we offer software services because it does uh, crack the code on becoming more sophisticated as well as being uh, scalable. So we work with almost any CSM operating system, including Anities. Um, we also help tweak Salesforce for customer success teams. If if your team has Salesforce, there's special ways that you can leverage Salesforce, and I'm going to touch on that during the webinar to scale your team and become more sophisticated. And of course, we do customer analytics because at the heart of it, uh, when you have a lot of data, customer data in your systems, you can be more sophisticated and it will uh, propel you to um, be more sophisticated with your success plays and, and automating them. So now we have about 15 team members. We have clients all over the world. And, and you could see some of the clients that we have in the logos below. 
Hey, Rick. Um, yeah. Just letting you know that I'm getting emails that apparently the chat box isn't working, unfortunately. So um, just letting everyone know that I'll just enable the uh, question panel, and then people can still send us their questions directly using that. Okay? Yeah, good idea. Thank you for that. No uh, so if you see any questions, Mathilde, just uh, let me know, just like you do now. Sure. That's awesome. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> So one of the things that I've learned and learned through my engagement with customers is that CSN teams don't become great on their own. You can hire the best of the best, but you really, in order to get the most results, you gotta have uh, apply the secrets to help them scale um, and through automation and repeatable plays. Otherwise, you will find that your team is much more reactive than they would like to be, or they can be uh, more a lot more strategic if you were to empower them. And so hopefully this webinar will give you enough examples so that um, you can uh, help your team become as great as they can be. And I'm sure they're great already. It's just, you know, <laughs> what else can we do to help them out? So uh, this is how you scale automated uh, plays. Um, and let's, let's see what we've got. Um, I want you to know that I'm going to show you a lot of things, but at the end of the day, if you wanted to get started, one of the things that I've, you know, I am a true believer in templatizing, and I love templates. I love to, I think they, they're a great tool to, to help teams get a quick start on something new that they haven't started with, and about 70% of you have not done so already. So um, at the end of the webinar, I believe tomorrow maybe, Mathilde is going to send you a replay of this webinar and a checklist to help you get started. Um, and so if you find a lot of examples, but you still feel like, wait, I need to understand how to start, please download this playbook. I think it will help you out a great deal. So uh, I'm going to show you uh, a few examples of each type of automated plays. Uh, the first one is going to be the most critical stage in a customer's life cycle, which is the onboarding. This is where we need to get them to get their first value as quickly as possible, as you know. The second one is how to leverage customer data to get more strategic in an automated way. So I'm really going to drill down to what, what does it take to be super sophisticated with your customer data? And what do we see other clients do that's a, a little bit maybe outside the box or help you think about it as you go and become more strategic with your data? And then the third one is the save playbooks. And so I'll show you, uh, you know, how to identify customers at risks, how to, um, what to do with those. I'm going to give you specific examples of at-risk playbooks that uh, one of my clients actually implemented when we worked with them. Um, and hopefully all of that will give you enough information, enough base to start things on your own. So I'll show you, um, so here's what you'll discover basically. Um, during onboarding, I'll show you how to scale with automated plays that will promote your onboarding process so that, so that will be both for self onboarding and for complex onboarding. And when I say complex, it really means that you have some human touch uh, in the onboarding process and maybe it takes more than a nanosecond. Um, the data collection that I've talked about, generating, uh, you know, leveraging as much customer data, that will help you get enough insights to promote adoption uh, and usage like, uh, like crazy. And then in a really smart way. And then we're going to go through the save, and I'm going to show you some proven examples of uh, playbooks that work right now for my clients. And so hopefully that will inspire you to take a look at your own customers at risk, create a similar list, and start doing automated playbooks yourself. So ultimately, if you apply automation playbooks, it will increase um, uh, your scalability, the overall efficiency of your team, and obviously effectiveness uh, using automated success plays. And, um, Ultimately, you will get massive results the more you leverage these automated uh, playbooks. So imagine the feeling of being more proactive, more strategic, not just for your highest paying customers, 
but for your small businesses as well, small customers as well. So where do we start? I'm going to show you three magical success plays uh, that you can implement probably fairly quickly. Um, and so let's see what, uh, what that looks like. Um, so let's start with onboarding. As you know, uh, the most uh, important, um, the, first, the first impression that we have is, first of all, when they acquire us, that's like one of the most important moments in a client's life cycle, and then when they get the first success. So that the shortest we can get that timeline, the better, and also we want to pay very close attention to these two milestones as we look into playbooks in general, but also in automating them. So think about it, what's easier for a client? Is it starting a journey when you have no idea where you're going or starting your customer journey when you know exactly what it will take to complete it? Of course, it's easier when you know what's going on and what you, know, what you would need to do to, to be successful and the journey is very well defined. So before I continue in showing you exactly what other companies are doing, I just wanted to say maybe in a show of hands, uh, how many of you uh, are actually have the team responsible for onboarding or have the, another team completely responsible for onboarding? And when you think about this question, if you're a high touch, that might be your professional services team, and if you're a tech touch, that might be your product team. So think about that when you answer the question. About, we have about 50, 60 percent. Okay, I'm going to close it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to share the results with you. So about half-half, I would say most of you are actually responsible for onboarding, and some of you actually have a different team responsible. So for those of you who have a different team responsible for onboarding, you know, don't shut your ears now. I'm going to talk about it a little bit. Um, there's a lot that customer success can do during onboarding, even if you're not responsible for it. And if I don't cover it enough during the webinar, feel free to send me an email, and I will teach you how to do this. Um, but listen in and um, see how you can collaborate with these other teams and fuse ideas for your company to experiment with these, uh, with these ideas, okay? I'm going to hide the poll now. <clears throat> okay. So as you can see, um, the most important thing during a, an onboarding is to really make sure that the client understand what they need to do. So if you have a complex onboarding, you're going to say, wait, uh, this is more like a self-onboarding type of walkthrough. And I would argue with that because um, there's some of you who might be selling multiple licenses for each client, and you might may or may not have the time to do a one-on-one -on -one training with each of them. So you might say, well, we're actually doing a training for the entire team when we go live. Well, what happens a year later, six months later, when they get new teams in place? So there's a difference between onboarding the client and make sure they get first value delivered and onboarding each user. And I would encourage you to look at tools like WalkMe and AppCues and Nickeld to think about whether you could quickly uh, manufacture these walkthroughs for the user so that they can understand what do they need to do when they first, uh, their first encounter with your application. And of course, if you have a tech touch approach or a mid-touch approach, this would be in tremendously important not only in scale your customer success efforts for those particular customers but making sure that the first experience they know exactly what to do and exactly where to, to click. Um, in, a, in a recent survey that they did uh, they found that 40 to 60 percent of the users will only open the application once and if they don't understand what to do or they're getting in some frustration they would never open it again. So think about whether something like that, either in the form of an application that you embed into your uh, solution, or there's other solutions, so I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, so other things, if you can't integrate a solution to do that walkthrough with your application, and I understand maybe some of you have an on prepping solution, um, you may want to talk and start working with a product team. 
to have a use uh, to use the progress meter within the application to break every step and task assignment. And so if you have an on-premise solution or you can't embed it in the application, this could be a well-defined cheat sheet that you um, share with the user or some sort of a email campaign that really breaks down every step so that they, make, they know what they need to do. Um, and of course, any kind of visual instructions that you can set, uh, share with them, whether it's on a slide, slide deck that they can go and on slide share and kind of walk through a certain process or a short training video, um, that would be great. So all of these uh, first bullet points really are geared to what can we do that we can share with the user to scale the onboarding process and make sure that they know what they need to do so that they're more successful. There's other types of onboarding automation plays, and those are the internal process automation. And these would typically translate to uh, making your calls to action and handoffs and tracking milestones in a more consistent manner. So for those of you who have uh, on-premise solutions or really have a team in place that, or, or you're the ones who are doing the onboarding, a lot of times uh, what we can do to improve that process is by automating some of the internal processes and handoffs. So before I go to the next slide, um, I want to give you an example. Uh, one of my clients, when I started working with them, the process looked like this. So when a client signed up, um, there was another team, I think it was a sales ops team, that had to manually review the contract and then assign uh, the, you know, the customer type to a customer. But there wasn't anything that triggers an alert or a call to action or um, nothing really happened. So the CSMs needed to manually go through the system every now and then and see do we have any new customers in place. So the one thing that you can automate is actually that process. Um, and then there's many companies that actually incorporate walk, you know, uh, walk, walk, workflows as well as calls to action when certain things change in the CRM system. So I'm going to dig in a little bit more and give you more examples as we go through the webinar. I just wanted to flush that out um, as to explain what that last bullet point meant. Hey, Rit, that's awesome. Um, I think we already have a question. Someone was asking if you could list those walkthrough tools that you were talking about. I think you said walk me. Uh, were there other ones? I can. OK, so before I do that, um, what I'd like to do is just open it up to the, to the uh, audience. And I want to get a, a, an understanding of what kind of tools you're using today. Um, I don't think, though, I have a, OK. So I think this is where the chat thing kind of maybe <laughs> is not working. So we're just going to skip this. And here's what I recommend to do with this slide, OK? Um, these are all the in-app applications I just talked about. So that's the answer to that question. Great question. Perfect. <laughs> and then um, other companies are also leveraging support solutions to create a more A automated approach to support and in-app messages, as well as creating a better experience or immediate experience to support. And this is going to be critical for the users uh, that are logging first time, but also in the first few months until they really get not just the first value delivered, but maybe a few more, really feel like they're getting a lot of value from your application. Um, these are other solutions that I want you to consider. Tracking usage, if you can. Um, so these are the ones that I see are being used a lot with my uh, clients. And then leveraging integration, and I'll talk about some examples on how Zapier is being used. Um, communication channels, so this is not just for your, you and your clients, but internally as well. Um, if you can automate exposing what's going on with the client to other teams by using Slack or Salesforce uh, chatter or communities or Lithium, I think that's going to make a, be, a, be a game changer for your company. And then obviously, email automation systems. So I just wanted to raise the point and say, if you're using Amity or any kind of other CSM operating systems, it's going to have typically a built-in uh, email automation tool or, or module within the application that you can leverage. And of course, you can always leverage a marketing automation solution. But the advantage of using the CSM op system is that um, 
you don't need to use a wide uh, email, you, you know, a, an organization-wide email like customer success at your company.com. The system will actually send the email from your own email address. Uh, so, and what we found is a lot of com a lot of times companies prefer that because people tend to open emails from people they know uh, more. So we see a, a, a major increase in click-through rates and open rates when we use a CSM ops system versus a generic marketing automation solution. Um, and then obviously when it's all integrated in one place, you can see the click-through and open rates and you can start tracking them or trigger them based on client data. So there's a lot of advantages in actually doing the email automation within your CSM ops systems. And then obviously another way to collect what's going on with your customers, especially if you have on-premise or just a lot of clients, is using some survey solutions. So I just named a few that I know my clients really like using, and some of the CSM app solution also offer survey uh, modules. And I always am for using everything you can within the same solution, unless there's a, you know, somebody else is owning the surveys and they actually need to use a different solution or you're already using it for other things and there, there could be other um, you know other considerations so what I'd like you to do is just take a screenshot of this because there's a lot going on and you're probably not gonna remember everything but as you evolve and think about scaling your team and using more tools this is a nice list to start with so do we have any questions um, until um, we do actually so first of all that's a great list I was just saying uh, I feel like a screenshot would be very helpful uh, but we do have a question someone here is not having um, they, they launched using intercom about three or five months ago and they're not having a great experience so far saying that it's uh, buggy for them and uh, they're having a hard time reaching customer service or customer support so they're actually asking what your opinion is about intercom and if you think uh -huh. that that's typical or not <laughs> yeah I can <laughs> I don't know if I, I can make an honest um, you know a, a broad uh, you know suggestion one way or another I know some companies have uh, have a good experience with intercom and have actually integrated that into Salesforce and other systems and uh, they're really happy with it and some of them you know are gonna struggle so it might be related to how you know well intercom integrates with your application and if you're you know with it's I would say that that would be true for any application that you're gonna use um, some companies are going to have a great experience and some companies are not going to have a great experience. If you're not having a great experience with a system, first thing you want to do, you know, is call your CSM at Intercom or the, the company you're dealing with and see sort of like if there's anything that you can fix. If it doesn't work, either you apply the wrong use case or it's just not a good fit and then you can always look at other options. So that's why I included, you know, Zendesk Zopim as another option. It doesn't, you know, um, and there's other solutions as well that I'm just not listing here, but they're definitely like a competitor to what Intercom is offering. Um, and so that would be a general advice. You know, if the application you're using is not working for you, it doesn't mean that it doesn't work for anybody. Just double check with your CSM and then look at other options. Awesome. Yeah, I think um, that definitely makes sense. And we actually have someone who's um, answering to that saying Intercom feedback. Uh, generally get good response from Intercom and saying that they may have gone too thin across some areas, but that as a chat tool, it's very good. Yeah, thanks, Jim, for uh, sharing that opinion. I want to encourage everybody to also, you know, answer questions that are being brought up. I have my own experiences with my clients, but if you have a feedback to share, uh, please feel free to do so. So thanks, Jim, uh, for, for doing that. So what about complex onboarding? I touched on that a little bit, you know, the human touch, and I know 70% of you, are, you own that. So this is going to be, um, I'm going to touch on what to do when that happens, because we're not doing self-onboarding here. Um, the first thing that I've noticed that my clients do that had been a game changer for them is to define the onboarding process. Define the milestones. And then for each milestone, define the specific tasks that relate to that. If you're using a CSM operating tool, like Amity, for example, 
then not only will you be able to see where each company is during the onboarding process, but it'll also show you what is their health score during that milestone or, or phase and exactly how many tasks had been completed. So as a manager, uh, not only can you see exactly who's behind, who's doing well, um, it'll help you uh, scale your team because now you will know where to escalate um, uh, specific clients as they're going through the onboarding. And I can't stress enough how important this is. Um, you can kind of do something like that in Salesforce. Um, so what I've seen other clients do, they it, it's more limited. They will define the different sections. Um, there won't be tasks because it's just too much, but you can potentially fire off tasks automatically based on the stage that you're in. But they will, however, track you know what date have they gone through each phase of the onboarding, um, you know, how, what have they completed? So they need to check off certain things before they can move them on. They can the CSM can move the client on to the next phase. So it does give them some visibility and certainly gives them opportunity to report about customers that are still onboarding. So this is one way to a degree that you can automate the process because you're not just coaching your team this one time and you're not really relating or. or um, completely dependent on each CSM to do whatever they think is right for onboarding, but you're offering a framework. Now here's the thing, remember we talked about it's easier for the client to know or go through that onboarding experience if they know what is going to happen. Once you've defined this for your internal team, you can share the same thing with your clients. Now, if I have a QBR with Inside Enterprises during their onboarding, I can tell them, hey, this is where you are in the process of onboarding. This is what needs to be done in order to get you completed. This is what we need you to do. So you can do the same framework, but from the client's perspective and make sure that you share it on an ongoing basis so that they can be more responsible for their own success. So what is the recipe to creating a successful onboarding based on what I just showed you? So you can either use a CRM system or a CSM system, and sometimes you just use a combination for both. Your CRM system, the things that you want to consider automating is the handoff process. Like I said, a lot of times my clients are still doing this very, very manually, and so there's a lag of time. The customer is losing sometimes the sense of excitement in getting on board because they just signed the deal. There's no... Um, milestone celebrations enough because it's not embedded in the system. You're not tracking it. So these are the opportunities to improve handoff. Um, I actually had a client that before they, the AE, the account executive, can close, can mark a deal close one, they actually had to fill out a certain section in the account object where they needed to say what was the use case that the client was hoping to achieve what are the key metrics that they wanted to accomplish? So sort of like their quantitative goals. Who are their primary contact? Who is the key user potentially if they have identified it during the sales process? So you can embed a lot of that during in, inside your CRM system and then move that stuff into your CSM system and help your CSM scale the onboarding process and automate some of these things so they don't have to call the AE and ask all these questions every single time. Um, so like I said, tracking contact, maybe even scoring the accounts and the users themselves. And so when you do use a, a solution like Intercom, you can actually move all that information into your CRM or CSM system and start scoring them based on the level of engagement that those users have. So that could be one area where you could potentially have some advantage in, in using a leverage and leveraging a tool like that. Um, and so we're going into integrating with other systems. And you see, you're going to see how important that's going to be to scale your team. In terms of the CSM system, uh, that offers you additional uh, advantages. 
uh, you can define calls to actions automatically. So you don't have to rely on your team to remember that this is something that you need to do when a client goes from one phase to another during onboarding. You can start tracking milestones. So now you can actually celebrate them. You can send automated emails when a client signs up, when a client gets their first value delivered, when a client you know, reaches a certain milestone. And you can identify delayed onboarding automatically. So again, you lose the dependency of having those weekly calls with each one of your CSMs or having to manually update it in Excel every time after you call a customer. Everything is going to be in a database. Um, you can add email templates. So I'll talk about that a little bit more. Essentially, what, what this means is that a lot of times we spend a lot of time to just craft that email that we're going to send out to our clients as they go through onboarding. What if you had a solution where you can host those email templates and then use that to fire off an email from the CSM every time you needed to? And some of those emails are going to be very important for onboarding when you think about change management. Um, one of them is uh, sort of like an email that you can send the executive sponsor uh, to help them you know, send out uh, the team uh, an email saying, hey, this is why we're going to do this, this is being kicked off, this is what you can expect. And so when the, the client's team, the client's potential users get this email from the executive sponsor, you're essentially facilitating or empowering him to create high adoption eventually. Um, so this would be an email template that you would share with the executive sponsor to um, unroll their team in change management and higher adoption. And so there's a list of emails that I typically work on with my clients to make sure that we cater to change management and we host all these email templates typically in the CSM system. Okay, so I'm going to move on. Is there any any questions, Mathilde? Yeah, so if, uh, someone's actually asking if you can elaborate about score, uh, scoring users and accounts. Uh, okay, so in the next section, I'm going to talk about data integration, and I'll definitely address that question. Great question. Perfect. Mm -hmm. It's a really great segue to start sharing with you the automation strategies that work to get higher adoption. So one thing that we want to do is make sure we have enough automation in getting the data all in one central place to uncover opportunities and lay the foundation to really understand what's going on with the customer. So if we have a rich customer 360 view automatically, um, we always know what's going on with the customer and that allows us to be more strategic and in return allow us to be um, very cognizant about where do we need to push adoption, uh, increase the breadth of what they're using within the application, so are there any other modules that you should be using, are there any users that should be using and are not, um, and then we can, just by automating that, we can be a lot more strategic about um, and much more, so introduce the scalability to be more strategic uh, to increase adoption in return. So here's an example from Rachel Jennings uh, who shared this online and I wanted to share it with you. And so remember how I said integrate the two. So she's actually integrating Intercom and Sales, Salesforce through Zapier so now they have all the users' data linked into the accounts in Salesforce, um, and she's sharing the link where you can learn how to do that. Um, she says it's amazing. It's actually a game changer. There's so much they can do with Salesforce, and I would argue that you can do the same with the CSM operation uh, solution. Um, it's probably best if you have a solid customer success strategy so that you can leverage the data, of course, and build automation into it. Um, and so they're actually in the process of doing that, but that's that's going to be key for you to be really sophisticated in automating um, plays. Now, like I said, there's some things that you can do even without centralizing the data. So this is sort of like your long-term strategy. So not only can you see a 360 view of your customers, but you can also start automating your health score. And the more information you have or more data points you have about your customer, the more sophisticated and accurate your health score is going to be. 
certainly your approach, strategy, your ability to automate email sequence based on usage data or other information um, is going to be more productive. So you definitely want, as part of your strategy for automating plays, think about where is my customer data? Is it really just in my CRM system? Can I work with the product team to get usage data? And if I have on-premise solution, do I have a solid customer feedback system so I can leverage that in a more massive way to really understand what works and what doesn't for my clients and then start this uh, process of playbook automations like that. And I think we have some questions here. Yeah, exactly. So um, someone is asking us, Mark is asking us, what a good metric is to measure adoption if you have a customer with multiple users that uh, uses multiple modules. Yeah, I would say, it's a great question. I would say there's multiple metrics that you want to um, definitely track, and I'm actually going to go over that. So from, I'm going to skip this and this, and then I'm going to go to that later. Yeah, so this is the answer to your question, and then I'm going to go back a few slides. So in order to come up with very effective automated plays that increase adoption, you want to do a whiteboard session with your entire team and really call out, maybe for each module, okay? What are the sticky features? List them. These, if you don't know what they are, you want to go to your sales engineer and ask him what are the sticky features. Uh, differentiating features, that's definitely something your sales engineer would know because they talk to prospects all day long and they need to emphasize those things in order to make the sale and, and look better versus your competitors. And then can you um, share benchmark data so that you can show the client how, they, how, how much they're using versus other customers? So certainly a way to score the client on how much value they're getting and, and kind of push that responsibility to the, cli to the client. So I'm going to talk about the third bullet point in our last webinar in June if you wanted to stick around to that. But for now, even if you do the first two bullet points, you're already have a heads up on adoption. So what do you want to do with these metrics? So first of all, you want to work with your product team to start you know, measuring them if you can. If you cannot, you want to start creating some surveys to, to say, are you using them? Are you not? Are you aware of them? Or create um, use cases that they can do too that would encourage using the sticky and the differentiating features. So like a bad example of metrics is login because no customer has purchased your application to log in. They purchased your application to uh, get some value. And the value that they get is usually the sticky features and the differentiating features. And maybe the last bullet point is what are the value features? Um, so if it's a, or value metrics. So if, for example, uh, I'm an automating, uh, e I'm an email automation uh, solution, what I want to see is high engagement and click-through rates, right, so that I can capture more leads. Um, so you want to talk about the use cases that they can do for each module or each feature that you want them to encourage using. And the reason I say that is because one of the clients that I started working with, their email campaigns were about the features themselves and how to use them. They didn't spend enough time to um, have maybe the first paragraph be about hey, Mr. Customer, this is the value you can get for your business if you were to use this feature. It was like, hey, did you know you have this feature? Here's how you can use it. No, you want to start with a value proposition. So the first thing that you want to do is think about what email campaigns or what training sessions or whatever you, tool you're going to use do I need to do to increase perceived value. And use cases are great. Uh, webinars with clients that talk about the value that they receive is great. Um, so once you um, take the steps to increase perceived value, meaning maybe I don't use it now, but now I get that I can do a lot more, that in and of itself would re reduce your churn rate. If clients understand that they can get more value, it's just that they didn't have time to do it yet, they're not going to churn as much as they would otherwise unless they're frustrated about other things. So then the next thing that you want to do is think about what kind of content do you need to create in order to give them the recipe to quickly realize that value. 
So if they understand that there's value to be achieved, but they don't know how to do it, then you're getting to the same point we got we're gotten into when you did the onboarding. People need to understand, your customers need to understand what do they need to do to get from point A to point B. So first, you open the buffet in terms of here's all the value you can get, and then you open the buffet and here's how you can quickly do it. If your customers are really, you really handhold them. It's high touch engagement model. Fine. Create those sessions for them. Give them a list of things that they can sign up for so that they can get that one-on-one -on -one coaching to help them realize the value. So there's a ton you can do. This is just a webinar, so I can't really speak about all the solutions, but um, if you need more help, of course, we're here. You can ask me questions after the webinar or just connect with us and we'll help you uh, get things started. And so these are some of the examples of what some of my clients have chosen to do to do one-to-many uh, strategies to sort of automate and definitely scale their efforts in educating their customers on how to realize value as well as increase their perceived value about their solutions. Uh, do we have any questions, Matilde? Yeah, so uh, thanks for that answer. That was great. Uh, someone is asking about customer feedback and uh, how often do you recommend that we gather customer feedback and what do you recommend using? They gave the example SurveyMonkey. Is there anything else? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a ton of survey solutions. And I'm not here to recommend SurveyMonkey. I'm just saying, you know, a lot of my customers use it, but some of them use different things. Matilda, I think you guys are using a different survey solution, right? Yeah, we use, um, we use Typeform, actually. Typeform, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to each is own. It really depends on the other systems that you're using. That you're using. Do they integrate with your other systems? Um, is there something special you want to trigger them, the, the surveys by? So sometimes when you get into automating the surveys, for example, some of my clients, um, they fire off a CSAT survey after the onboarding is complete. And then they determine how much uh, commission they're going to play uh, pay the AE based on uh, you know, a question that they have in the survey to say, how much was the onboarding process similar to what your AE told you it's going to be? So that's one thing that they did in order to improve handoff, for example. Um, in terms of how often should you gather customer feedback, I think it really depends. Um, there's certain milestones where you can just fire a quick survey, like when you finish onboarding or you know, things like that. In terms of NPS surveys, I know some companies have told me that they incorporate the NPS survey as part of finishing onboarding or part of every time when a support ticket is closed. I personally do not recommend that. I think it's fine to send out a CSAT question, quick CSAT survey after you got some help from your support team, after you finished onboarding. I don't think it's appropriate to mingle it with the NPS because then you get some bias uh, on your NPS survey results. What I do recommend is to send out the NPS survey either once a year or twice a year, and you want to figure out when do you want to send that NPS survey based on the renewal date for your client. And if your client is renewing every three years, so that would be their anniversary date. So every six months, and that will give you a sense of, hey, do, do we have a churn risk here? So if I can send every month the NPS survey, but every month it's going to be a different set of clients, and you can automate the entire thing, that would be the best thing because you will know six months ahead of the renewal date whether you got a lot of you know, really low scores on your NPS, and then there's something you can do about it to take action and be more strategic about um, you know, uh, creating a healthier customer. And we help clients all the time in automating these playbooks and gathering all this information into one central place so they can be super strategic about it. And this is one example of a client that we actually helped with. And they had a tremendous challenge having these data disparate between different systems and really understanding what's going on with a client. We would call out logging, clicking through different screens. Uh, running reports, and then in the meantime, they have all this slew of clients just calling them again and again because they really had a more of a mid-touch approach, I believe. So 
uh, we really unclogged that for them and, and created a breakthrough in terms of a significant improvement in how they approach customer success strategy and the level of automation that we introduced and the visibility that they got to their customer, uh, you know, 360 view, if you will. Um, so I want to talk really quickly about uh, safe playbooks. I know we don't have a lot of time, so I'm just going to kind of rush through it. But it's really important to have um, that data in. This is one example for incorporating, for example, Pendo in Salesforce, or you know, you can do the same with your CSM system to create a risk watch list and base that on your account health score. Um, so this is great for both high and mid touch. Um, just to get more visibility quickly and scale the team. These are some of the things that you can track and define in a CSM operating uh, system. And also, you know, if you look at this example, you'll see that what they've done is they pulled the Salesforce data or your CSM data with the NPS from Pendo and pushed it into a Slack channel that gives them real-time responses and feedback for their entire organization to view. A lot of times we hear there's issues with siloism, and so this is one approach that you want to look into integrating your system so that you have a better cross-functional um, communication overall, which will elevate the customer experience. This is an example of risk watch list. Uh, so these are all triggers for automated calls to action with a specific save play for the team to look at. So instead of relying on the team, to go through all the customer data that's like in different systems. Um, they actually centralize the data in one place and then they triggered a call to action with a very specific play based on different uh, scenarios. So these are type of automated plays for a risk, or customers at risk that will then um, give the CSM a specific play to what to do when this happens. And so I want to give you what does a playbook look like? Because it's one thing to trigger a call to action, but if you can be uh, descriptive about what, what should they do, then that would be even better. So, for example, the playbook could be, okay, they, they are slow to adopt after go live. You want to define the value for the customer, right? And what, why are you firing off this playbook and what is the CSM needs to do? Um, define the success criteria so that the CSM knows whether or not they're successful in applying the playbook and then define the owner. So most of them would be your customer success managers. And here's an example of a playbook that would save the client. Um, so first of all, you can go live stage and training kickoff, um, you know, what to do after 30 days of kickoff, schedule an introduction with the executive lead, you know, that always helps. So you can see that it's really step by step. The customer success is assigned. You can track whether or not they've done all these tasks, especially if you embed them in a CSM operating system. And I'm just, you can take a screenshot of this. This could be a great template for you if you incorporate that in Excel or Word to start creating your own plays. Um, and this is how it would look like once you take what you're, you've drafted up in Word or Excel, if you push that into a CSM uh, operating system, this one is as Amity, this is how it would look like. It would tell you which one is at risk and why, um, and you know how long has it been since you flagged them as at risk for this particular reason. Um, and then you know, if there's a play that's associated with them, you'll see how far did the CSM go in taking care of, of, of this risk. So we're almost at time here. Um, let's see. Yes. Okay. Um, the one thing that I wanted to share with you is an automated playbook that doesn't have to do with anything and any kind of data that you need to rely on. And I highly recommend it. Um, about uh, two months ago, I signed up for a Splash app, and that's a solution to quickly create event pages. And before I knew it, I got an email from the CEO. Um, and it says, hey, somebody from our support, support team said that you started using it, and uh, this is pretty awesome, and it seems like you're off to a great start. And this is the key sentence here. Just wanted to make sure everything is going all right with your experience. We've built Splash based on feedback from users like you, so please let us know. Now, just so you know, at that point, I was so frustrated with it. 
I was ready to churn, <laughs> okay? And so instead of churning, I actually emailed him back and I said, this is what I see, this is what's great, this is what I think you need to work on. And then he replied back, this is, you know, like there was a back and forth. Now I'm like personally invested with his solution. And then I'm a little bit more compassionate about some of the glitches I know they're, they're facing because he explained they're a new solution, they're working on it, it's in the roadmap. Oh, now I'm not sure, and I'm actually one of their biggest fans because I have this personal connection. And if you think it's only Splash Dad that's, that's doing it, you're absolutely wrong. A lot of companies are actually leveraging this. So here's another example from a CEO email. Um, that's sending it out to all the users. This is important because we know that clients are less likely to churn if there's a personal connection to your solution and the people involved in your company. And when you're doing one-to-many solution, it's really hard to create that. But here's a great example where you can scale that completely. Um, I mean, a few days ago, uh, my husband is working in another company and the CEO received a letter in the mail from United Airlines CEO saying thank you for flying five million miles in the last I don't know how long but he, he flies a lot and so he received an, a mail with his signature I mean there's crazy stuff that you can do but this is an example I think you should you know this is a great thing that you can start doing almost immediately it doesn't require much so if you take anything away this would be a good thing um, this is the recipe. All you need is the contact information. You need an email automation solution because they don't really literally need to send it to everyone manually. And then you want to kind of incorporate that information into Customer 360 so you can track engagement as well as capture that feedback into a centralized place. So what do you think? Um, is there something here for you? And so I wanted to just suggest that if you are uh, starting out and you need some more help, you can either use the cheat sheet, and if you feel like you need a little bit more, like somebody that would come in and assess the data that you currently have or the systems you currently have, maybe the first step uh, and really assess what should be your priority in, in uh, scaling your customer uh, success team. We offer a free bonus today that will help you, uh, you know, include this step as part of your strategy to uh, scale your team. And so I will actually offer this free assessment for the first 10 that will text for, you know, help me scale to 44222. And that will give you a free schedule um, assessment of either your Salesforce or your CSM solution. And what you'll get out of it is a live review and discussion of your customer success technology experts, a deeper uh, understanding of your customer success best practices, um, recommendations to scale your team without purchasing new tools and better insights on how to better leverage your customer data to automate your place and um, enhancement suggestions to architecting either Salesforce or your CSM solution architecture to get more automation done. Um, what you'll be able to create after the session is a more effective strategy and clear prioritization for your automation playbooks. You will see that you will be able to reduce manual processes and uh, get more value from your current CSM solution, get a consistent delivery of your playbooks across your team members, and improve cross-functional collaboration for not, you know, your entire team and, and really get a, an effective strategy for your SMB accounts. So hurry up. Like I said, to qualify, you must either have Salesforce or a CSM solution in place, and we'll offer this free assessment. Like I said, it's going to be a live call for the first 10 who will text help me scale to your uh, to 44222. If you liked what you heard today, um, basically we'll help, we'd love to help you more. Please connect with us online, either facebook.com CSM practice or go uh, to our blogs area and read more about what we share and certainly you're welcome to follow us on Twitter. We always publish new um, blogs, not just from us, but we tweet about others as well that we find interesting. We love to engage with you and be partners uh, in your journey to scale your team. And if you have any additional questions, if we have time, I'm happy to stick around. Uh, I don't really have a meeting for at least another few minutes. So, Thank you so much, Yuri. That was awesome. Uh, if anyone has answers and has a few more minutes, they want to stick around, feel free to, to send us questions now. I'm not in a hurry either. Yeah. but. <laughs> And if the text failed, um, just go ahead and uh, send an email to info at csmpractice.com. 
Uh, the email is at the top and just uh, put the, the topic line as free CSM technology assessment or free CSM playbooks assessment and we'll respond. Awesome. Thanks to everyone that's uh, sending us little notes saying thank you. Uh, we're really glad that everyone enjoyed the webinar. Sorry for the little technical difficulty at the end, but that happens. Okay. Yeah. I don't think we're getting. I don't think we're getting any more questions. But um, oh no, no more questions. But uh, thank you. Thanks everyone. So yeah, you have the email address right there. So if you do think of a question later on. Um, I think you should definitely email Irit, and I'm sure she'd love to help you out. Um, so just before we uh, close, thanks for sticking around for those extra eight minutes, everyone. If you want to get a demo of Amity, uh, you can just go on the website and click on Request a Demo, or go to GetAmity slash demo, and, uh, or just send me an email. I'm sure everyone has my email address, because I send emails all the time. So just send me an, an email, and I'd love to put you in touch with someone. But uh, yeah, thank you so much, Yurit. That was awesome. Thanks for all of that content. I think a lot of people were excited to get the slides and the playbooks and all of the lists. So, um, so that's really great. Awesome. Yeah. Hopefully, I'll see everyone next month on the next uh, webinar on scaling the team. We'll have a lot more insights and hopefully can get you started. Awesome. Yeah. The next one is about uh, productivity tools. So I'm really excited. Uh, and awesome. it's in a month. So. Yeah, thank you so much, Yuri, and thank you so much, everyone. I hope everyone has a wonderful day, um, and I hope everyone has a great end of the week and a great weekend and, you know, everything. So thanks, Yuri. <laughs> thanks, Mathilde. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you.